So in this video, I want to talk about this code. So over here, I'm using the number sign followed by include. So this means that I want to use something inside this file, all right? So I want to include and in angle brackets, I'm saying standard input output and standard library dot h and dot h. This dot h means that these files are header files. And a header file is basically a file that contains some C code that is already written and we can use it. All right. So for example, this printf, we know that it prints hello world on screen, but I don't care about this right now. What's important is that if we right click on it and press find declaration of printf, you will see that standard input output .h automatically opens. And here we have the declaration of printf. So in order to be able to use printf in this file, I'm including the standard input output header file over here. So then I'm going to use something from inside this file over here. For example, printf, all right? So to keep things simple, you will include these two files every time in your program because you will always use them. Now, this over here is called a function. Let me tell you about the parts of the function. First of all, it has a type. So the type of this function is an integer and we type it i and t. So an integer is a number without a decimal point. So for example, 0, 1, minus 2, minus 3, okay? Any number without a decimal point. Then we put a space and the name of the function. So the name of this function is main. And this is a special name because this function is the main function inside any C program. Then we put some parentheses. We will talk about them later. And then we have braces. And inside the braces, we have the code of the function. Basically, a function is a group of code, all right? So this main function has two sentences, right? This sentence ends with a semicolon and this sentence ends with a semicolon. So whenever you see something that ends with a semicolon, it is called a statement or an instruction. And it's basically a sentence that makes some action. So for example, printf prints something, right? So this is an action. Now, return zero, let's talk about it. I'm going to press over here, build and run. So this basically will transform this code into a program that my computer can run and it will automatically run it. So press on it and here you go. This is the result of printf, it printed something. And this over here is the result of return zero. So the process returns zero. So the program returns zero, all right? So let me close this and change this to be one, for example. Now build and run again and have a look. Now we have process returned one, all right? So since the type of main is an integer, we can tell it to give us or return an integer and that is using the return. And after it, we put the integer that we want. And usually we put return zero to indicate that when we run our program and it finishes, everything works perfectly without errors. So let me build and run. So now we see process returned zero. This indicates that our program ran successfully and it has no errors. Now, if we have an error, we will see something different than return zero. We may see a long negative number, okay? I don't know. But what's important is that whenever we see process return zero, we will know that our program ran successfully without errors. But let me tell you something. Sometimes we see return zero, and even if we see it, we still have some problems in our program, but don't worry, we will talk about that later. What I want you to know right now is whenever we see return zero, we can suppose that everything is okay, all right? And later on, we will see the importance of this return statement or instruction whenever we start making functions of our own, all right? Now, one more thing to say about the main function, as I said, it is the main function in a C program. So whenever I build and run the program, this will create a program and run it, right? So when I run the program, the first thing I do, I come to this function and start executing the instructions inside it. So later on, when we make functions of our own, we will use these functions from inside the main function, okay? And don't worry, everything will be clear. But now just have the idea. Now, one more thing to talk about, suppose you want to say something about the program. So for example, this program prints something on screen, okay? 
So let's try to build and run the program and we have an error. And this is basically because we are typing something that C does not understand. This is a human language and this is not a C code. So this will cause an error. So to be able to write something in a human language, we have to make it a comment. So it is not considered a part of the code. So we put two forward slashes and to make it a little bit bold in code blocks, we put three forward slashes. Now, this over here is a comment and it will be ignored. It's not a part of the code. So build and run and now the program works, okay? So this is a single line comment. So if we type something over here, it is not a comment. So to make a multi-line comment, put forward slash star star forward slash. So whatever we put over here will be a comment. So have a look. Everything is in gray. So everything is a comment. And to make it a little bit bold, put more stars over here. So now if I build and run the program, the program works and these are ignored. All right. So this is it about comments. So whenever you want to write something and explain and put some details, use comments. So this is it and I'll see you in the next video.